All right, uh, hello everybody. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Uh, it is September the 10th, uh, uh, Monday evening, 2012. Coming November 6, 2012, of course, is Election Day, and we're having some interviews and some honest conversations here with uh, candidates that uh, you might want to hear about uh, that are independent. Um, third-party candidates, Libertarian, Green Party candidates, um, other third-party candidates and independents who are going to be on the ballot this year and that the people will have a, a uh, chance to uh, elect. And uh, so today we have Eric uh, Olson and he is running as Libertarian for the U.S. House at large in uh, North Dakota. And um, he's, uh, his uh, opponents here on, on the campaign are Pam Gullison and um, who's the, uh, I guess, a Democrat, and the um, uh, Kevin, no, no, yeah, Kevin Kramer, is it? Or, um, yep, Kevin Kramer. Yeah, the Republican. And uh, so now looking through Eric's um, website, I see here a lot of good issues, which we'll ask him about. But um, we usually start out with what, you know, gets you motivated, um, a little bit about you. If you could tell us a little bit about uh, North Dakota as well, sir, and uh, good evening, and thank you for your accessibility and uh, willingness to do this interview. We do appreciate that, and uh, so uh, good uh, evening, Eric, and um, thanks for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, well, my my motivation really, for the large part, is a, a lack of, of candidates on the ballot that I really feel like I want to vote for. Um, Election after election, I've had most of the spots on ballots, regardless of, of where I've lived. I've spent most of my life in, in North Dakota. Uh, I grew up here, um, but I've been a few other places, and I rarely, I rarely see anyone on the ballot who I'm really excited to vote for, even even really really lean towards very strongly. I see, uh, especially recently, both parties getting closer and closer together, and, and largely ignoring a lot of the issues I, I'm trying to bring up in my campaign. Um, I'm I'm running partly so that I have someone I can vote for. Well, that's a good reason. Yeah, if, if I, you know, you can't vote for someone, then um, why, why not run? And uh, and actually, um, and that probably, you know, m might give a lot of other people a reason to vote for. And you're really the only alternative candidate on the, on the ballot. I mean, there's no Green Party candidate. There's no other parties. There's no other independents. Um, so anyone else that might be just sick of the Republicans or Democrats, um, it, you, you know, might find you a, a person to vote for. Um, there's a 10 percent approval rating in, in Congress, um, and both parties uh, have a lower um, uh, percentage of people that identify themselves as a Republican or Democrat than they do independent. So, I mean, it, I guess this is a perfect year to, you know, see who else is out there. Now, I mean, if we elect you um, or if you're, you know, North Dakota elects you, I mean, you know, being a third party libertarian or something, I mean, are you just going to cause havoc or something? I mean, is this, um, uh, well, I guess maybe that might be a good thing, but I mean, well, what, what's the, we can't elect a libertarian. I mean, you're not a Republican or Democrat. So, I mean, you know, what's, um, what, what might be the difference, um, you know, electing someone that's, uh, you, you know, and we have seen some individuals, there hardly are any independents in there right now. And I'm thinking, you know, I mean, maybe we should have about 50 or, or something independents. That would be more like the number I'd like to see at first, if not, you know, a majority. But uh, independent third-party candidates. I mean, look at the Libertarian Party platform. I mean, that sounds, you know, pretty American to me and, and stuff, right? Yeah, well, we certainly need some new voices in there. The, the major parties are almost acting like, acting like one party at this point. There's a couple of issues they're, they're willing to differ on, and, and largely those are only issues that don't really affect the bottom line of, of anybody because they're all receiving their, their funding from exactly the same people in almost the same ratios. Um, effectively, there's no difference between the Republican and Democratic parties and we're we're starting to see a a decline in in people that that actively strongly support one of those sides or the other. Independents are are a growing percentage. Um, a a lot of people are not happy with either party. Don't really align with either or simply align with one because they perceive the other to be a, a somewhat larger threat to them. 
or to to the way they they'd like to live or or the way they they'd like to see the country headed. Um, I think that the the only thing preventing third party and indica- independent candidates from taking huge percentages of the vote is people knowing that they're there and running and and what they're about. Um, that is, that is the biggest thing, and that is and that is a struggle. the The media does not like to acknowledge third party candidates. I got a little bit of response early on, some press, um, but I've been largely cut out since then. Um, I've been cut out of, of all the the post primary debates. Um, they don't like to include me in polls. I've only been in, in the one poll so far, and. They, they really don't want to acknowledge that there are third parties in the race or that third party candidates are, are legitimate candidates. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost problem, like a feudalistic system where, you know, you have two, it's almost like two people are in charge and, and, and they each take turns wearing this, you know, magical blue or red robe or something that gives them the power for two years. And, um, and so everyone else, I mean, they're not just telling third parties, they're actually telling you as an individual, they're telling anyone else in North Dakota who decides not to run as a Democrat or Republican, um, which who, by the way, has, um, y- y- you know, a 10% approval rating and, and, and um, are losing people that identify with either of those two parties fast. Um, they're telling you that, um, I mean, they do the same thing probably for any other third party or independent as well. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, we're, we're getting to the point where it's, well, we just had our MasterCard and had a problem with it. Let's try switching to Visa. <laughs> we're not, there, there's not a difference. There really isn't on any key issues. We, we went from, and I, I, I don't think, I don't think a lot of people are, are, are getting the picture. It's being, it's being filtered. There's a really a lot of effort to divide people and put them on one side or the well, other. Well, the media also, I mean, according to the Gallup poll, and these are the polls I'm, I'm talking about, is um, with a 10% approval rating record low and, um, uh, well, it's tied the record low. The previous record low was just six months ago in March um, at 10% also. And um, and the media has like about 17% in approval rating. And, and maybe that has something to do with it. Um, and of course, um, y- you know, the, the news a long time ago used to be like, um, you know, not about making money during the news hour and, and they wouldn't, you know, make it all entertainment. Like, and, um, uh, now uh, they found, you, you know, it, it's better to have these kind of like hardball shows and um, they can make money off it. So, I mean, the, the news now is kind of like they're making their own news as much as they are reporting it. Um, and, and, and basically, Eric, um, it's like, and, and every anyone listening here, I mean, basically how I've seen it is, um, you know, in, in the 70s, the 80s, um, and uh, we had a Democrat Congress, or Democrat-controlled Congress. Sometimes we'd have a Republican um, president, although in 1980 there's an independent who ran as president. In 1992, Ross Perot ran, of course, you might know, and, and, and in a three-way race he got um, 19%, although he did drop out and come back in, so that probably hurt his percentages. He, he, but even with that, he had 19%. And then there's a new Republican Congress, and then we had a Democrat president. And then after 2000, I mean, Bush, he had a full house for a little bit, but then it switched back to a Democrat house because people were so sick of you, you know how um the, i guess absolute power corrupts absolutely and then we got a uh, democrat president and then switched back to a republican house um because obama had a full house he had a chance you know with the democrat oh, if only the democrats were in control people forget they had a full house just like about two years ago and they had their chance um and so did the republicans uh people are going back and forth um uh, just teetering tottering between these two things and finally um like before it took like 30 years for them to go back and forth and then it's like about 10 years now it's like every two years in the media you you know they 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 frame the debate as if like the people don't know what they want or some other story similar to that and and really the i mean if people think those are the only two options that's this that's what i would do too if i voted Republican and Democrat um, is uh, keep switching back and forth so neither of them can do too much damage and and, and that's what the people are seeing maybe the you know this year um, or soon enough it's going to be something will give and they'll eventually choose other options Um, now the the thing about libertarians is you know you guys um, you you know want want to 
legalize marijuana and, and actually a lot of half the population admitted to using it um, and it doesn't give anyone a right to get away with any crimes while on it um, and uh, you know you want to get rid of social security and um, and things like that you know but but actually on a lot of social issues a lot of people would agree with you on actually um, so what, what do you say to like that um, like I mean are you the real alternative choice I mean what are the, I, I see your whole list of issues. I mean, I think, I mean, you can go down the list and they're all, I think, pretty popular issues. Oh, I think so. I mean, I'm, most of the things I'm making issue of are very popular positions that are not at all represented by the other parties. Now, I want peace. I want an end to the drug war. I'd like to stop printing money to you know, spend reasonably. We don't run up this insane debt that we're going to have to pay for for generations into the future. Um, just really common sense stuff that most people can agree with. Most people, I think, have more or less, you know, a, a live, and, live and let live uh, feeling towards other people. We don't want to control everything that other people do in, in their lives and regulate every little bit of it. And, uh, you know, most people are, are not happy with it, the complexity and the expense of everything the government does. I and mean, we have... We have more programs than you can count doing all kinds of things at absurd expense to the public, and a lot of them really don't show a lot of results. And, but the big ones are war, war overseas. We're, we're, our military is expanded across the entire planet, and we have a drug war going on in Mexico, overflowing our border into our country. We have, we have the drug war on the American people. And most people, I don't think, support this. Most people, most people would not turn in the people that they know that smoke marijuana or that 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 violate any of these silly laws. And it's it's getting to be that way with copyright and and uh, software patent laws and, and things like that too. They're getting really bizarre legislation. And um, we recently saw the SOPA issue, which I brought up at a at a congressional debate here with five, six other candidates, uh, five and one, six and the other, and nobody else would even touch the issue. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Um, why can't we hear about those things? Yeah, actually, that was one thing that got uh, SOPA, PIPA, these were like um, uh, Internet acts. Well, one was uh, the congressional version. I mean, actually, these were two um, legislations that have been put on pause um, because so many people were outraged about it that they everyone I mean this was a success um, and, and actually the, this part two of this because this was earlier this year and, and and hardly something like this has happened in a while where so many people called in to their representatives to prevent this from happening even a lot of businesses like Google and and um, and CNETs and, and all these, you know, half the articles I would read that are like technology articles, writers, they were all dead set against this. Um, the main problem with this was is that you were guilty until proven innocent instead of maintaining your rights to be innocent until proven guilty. And so that flips it on its head. Any corporation could, you know, shut down someone's like little uh, travel blog or something or just whatever based on... Um, no proof or evidence or a due process whatsoever and so you're guilty until proven innocent and yeah the government is it's 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 it, well we are the government and i guess we're doing this to ourselves with our own dollars i mean the tsa is expanding expanding past the airports now they want to just do random searches on the highways the tsa um and uh you, you know there's more cameras on us there's cameras on every street corner and 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 we are not allowed to you know yet you know, there's challenges in court of whether we can even film our public um, servants, and uh, th there's just uh, so so much. I, I mean, the drug war that is an invasion to people's privacy. The the uh, prison industrial complex. I mean, they make a profit on on people going to to prison for things that half the people in this country have admitted to doing. I mean, either you know, equal justice under the law would require. You know, half of us to be in jail, or, or let's just end this, you know, useless um, war. And it is a war. People are wearing like fatigues and and like, um, you know, like jackboot setup gear and, and just smashing into people's um, homes and stuff and and killing their pets and and you know, and some of them they not even the right house. And you know, we are beyond just Mexico. I mean, we're in South America. You know, we're actually growing the opium in Afghanistan. It's just crazy. It's it's. I think the foreign 
war um, debate is just one major question. I mean, everyone, are, do you want to be an empire or do you want to be a republic? I mean, isn't that a question? Do you want to be a part of a, do you want, to, do you want your children to grow up in an empire or a republic? Yeah, well, do you want to, do you want to live free? Yeah. Or do you want to have a government that controls every aspect of your lives? Is, is, you know, I, I grew up learning being told that America is a free country. Uh, why do we have more people in prison than all of these other countries that are supposedly less free than us, less advanced? Yeah, just Google. No. I mean, anyone listening to this is probably going to be on the Internet, but Google, you know, a U.S. incarceration rate. You know, come up with like a whole page of just, you know, we have the highest incarceration rate than China. Um, that you know, you know that communist country which has a billion people they have a billion people and we have more people per capita and in actual numbers than them and Iran who we're about to go to war with you know and uh, it seems like and um, and Russia and um, all these countries that we criticize for human rights we have the highest <laughs> we're the ones who, and we can't you know let's wake up to that you know be aware of where we're actually at we have free freedom of speech zones and um, I'd, you know the the police you know are starting to look more and more like you know like a uh, military I don't know. I don't know. you know most of these people we have in prison are, are nonviolent nonviolent crimes they're just they're political crimes they're crimes of them having uh, choosing a lifestyle that's not approved by the authorities uh, <laughs> Yeah, and it's, talking about it's budget, I mean, that's about half our budget right there is the drug yeah, on well, wars. We talk about welfare. Yeah. The expense of welfare. Everyone in prison is on welfare. We are paying their way out of our pockets. About $40,000 per person. Yeah. That's more than the yeah, average median income. That's a lot income. of money. Well, that's more than the average median income of, you know, a typical American. So, yeah, that, that, that doesn't A lot make of people sense. are perfectly capable of, of being productive members of society that weren't necessarily bothering anybody or causing anyone any harm. Um, you know, a lot of these are, are not people that, that whose neighbors complained about their negative influence. These are, these are people who crimes. the, the government crimes. went after because they, they got in the way of a political agenda for one reason or another because there's, a, there's so much money in the drug war. Yeah, they have to, I mean, they have to make, you know, have some numbers to get more funding, you know, and the more that mm -hmm. they probably make, the more funding. So it's something that just, it's, it's, it's not sustainable because, I mean, if that's just one program, but if we have all these programs where the, goal or the um, quota of the agency, you know, even though they don't have any quotas, is, is to increase what they did the year before so they can get more funding, it, eventually it's going to turn on its head and, and, and we're, it, it's eventually going to, you know, turn into like a black hole or something, you know. Well, which, I, you know, I have a question to pose for people. Which financial institutions are large enough to launder the billions of dollars involved in the drug war? Yeah, the and ones that are too big to fail. It's probably a pretty short list. And look at the list of financial institutions that are supporting Democratic and Republican candidates. Goldman Sachs. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of these have been caught red-handed. Yeah, that's true, actually. A lot of these actually, banks have been caught red-handed, laundering news. money for drug cartels and for Al-Qaeda-related operations, for all kinds of illegal operations. If you, as a person, contribute in any way... Um, to the drug trade, you can you can get you know dozens of years uh, prison sentence. These large corporations do it. They don't. Oh, they but, don't go but to the prison. banks they don't can, get seized. The, the banks can use all that money that these drug you, you know that that's funneled through them f to invest and make derivatives. So like you know if a big mm -hmm. drug cartel deposits a billion dollars in there or whatever it is, then you know then that means that bank actually has ten billion dollars, you know, and then they use that and then buying derivatives, they probably have it expensionally passed there. I mean, yeah, it, it's just um not in July it was a bank called HSBC and and um. There's been lots of other banks, and yeah, you're right. These are these big um, international banks. Um, we did a partial audit of the Fed recently, and it's been reported in Bloomberg. Um, I believe it was Bloomberg. Yeah, they um, $15 trillion that the Federal Reserve spent, um, and, and our 
yearly budget's about two and a half. I think, well, with that's with we borrow about 40% out of every dollar so I think it's like three and a half trillion and so the Fed the Congress is supposed to have the power of the purse they spend um, 3.5 trillion a year a lot of it's borrowed um, but the Federal Reserve in like um, that same amount of time span spends you know 15 trillion dollars without even asking Congress about how they spend it and a lot of that money was lent to foreign banks and you know competitors and things like that. Um, it's uh, we totally bailed out these um, banks and, and 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 prevented mid-size and small banks that might have bought them up from um, having better management and uh, and uh, letting capital capitalism isn't that the best trust buster there is. Well. Had we allowed them to fail, other people could have come up in their place, done a better job, and gotten the business. That's what would happen to my business if I overextend myself, do some, some, make some dumb business decisions, and destroy my own ability to earn an income. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I run a, I run a small inventory service. Uh, if I was to, if I was to go bankrupt, other companies would come in and do what I do. Other people would get my business. The people that work for me would go work for them. Uh, that's how it should work. Yeah. That's how you get better businesses, by having the ones who best serve the customer, who best serve our, our interest, survive and go on. Um, by propping up ones who have done things uh, maliciously to uh, destroy and, and just suck money out of our economy without any regard for the, the, the well-being of, of everyone who's going to be affected by it when it when the bubble bursts and it collapses um, we shouldn't be propping up those people and, and saving them oh, it's common sense I mean what if you're a football team and like um, you're the coach and you kept you had this one person um, like in your special teams who always returned the ball and always got you like 20 yards or something like that and you had this other person that always consistently every single time fumbled the ball and you decided to um, play that person though you know now it's the playoffs you know and you decided to uh play that person every single time i mean um it's like we're rewarding the ones who fail not only at the expense of um you know the rest of the team uh, but um but towards a person who actually has proven to do a good job who didn't need the bailouts and um and at the same time we're rewarding the failure um so i mean what's that going to tell everyone else to do and it's just completely you know backwards i mean it really it's just um it, and, and it's so short sight i mean they could have at least i mean here's what ron paul said just making the points um as you, you know everyone knows he's not like um like a you know socialist or democrat left leaning or whatever but he said i mean it would have been better if we're going to bail out these banks to have just given the money to the people so that they could have paid off the banks you know um that way you would have helped two parties at the very least but instead they just decided to bail out the banks i mean because um uh, so people could have just uh, giving the money to the banks instead. I mean, it's um, so it really and, and our administration's filled with Goldman Sachs. Um, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, on both sides of the aisle too. I mean, especially in the Treasury Department, the regulations departments. I mean, the FDA is a uh, you know a, a, a revolving door of you know companies that have interest. Now, of course, I mean, I do want you know I I like my meat inspected. I mean, maybe a compromise between. The FDA is people, of course, want their meat inspected. Maybe businesses, um, who, you know, there could be a market, kind of like a consumer reports. Like maybe businesses who want the FDA label could pay for it, and and, um, and that way they could advertise that this has been FDA inspected, just kind of like an organic, um, uh, you, you know, this was made organically type label, and um, and you know, and then that way the FDA could be self-sustaining, and and I think actually, you know, what a lot of people might want to pay for that because I would personally rather buy something that says it was inspected than it wasn't, you know. Well, from a viable. I source. want those. I want those things. I want to know what's in my food. I think we should have ingredients. I don't think the FDA is doing that for us. The FDA and other government agencies that, that regulate food and environmental effects and those sort of things tend to have this revolving door with the industries they regulate. Yeah. The only people big enough to influence those regulations are those industries. They're not really looking out for our interests. 
Uh, and you know that's the problem. Um, and for that reason, I don't I don't support our, our federal government uh, maintaining those organizations and having them, them oversee. And they they like to go out and ban things that are a threat to to product lines of, of big pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Oh, totally. uh, and that that should not be the purpose of the FDA or the EPA. Uh, they should be there to protect us, and it's, it's clear to me that that's just not going to happen on the federal level. Uh, the one thing I do think the federal government should should regulate and and, uh, and uh, control for us is is telling us what's in products that are imported. I don't think they should tell us necessarily, you know, what we can and can't buy, but they they should enforce the no, the the exchange of knowledge that allows us to know what we're purchasing so that we can make our own decisions. Yeah, maybe the absence of fraud or, or whatever because um well one thing and this might be more of a state issue, but once one state does it arguably it could affect a lot of other states and that's a power like California wanted to make um the the, the the labeling of um, genetically modified foods mandatory doesn't mean you can't buy it. It just means that, you know, yeah. you would know to... Now, here's the argument against that. I think that's legitimate, um, perfectly legit. And that doesn't get in the way of any, anything. It doesn't prevent you from making or selling your product, whatever it is. It just lets people know what they're getting. But the reason why, I mean, it could pass the litmus test for libertarians, even Green Party or whoever you are, just your average American um, citizen, um, is that uh, if they're going to, like, let's just say, for example, a food that is genetically modified is like um, a very popular food is um, soybeans. Um, soybeans are, there's most of the ones that are made are actually genetically modified. Soybeans and corn, I think those are the two big ones. And, um, and so if they're, but if you try to grow one of those genetically modified um, soybeans, you might get sued because it's patented. So if yeah. it's and that's the insane thing, the the concept that these that these big biotech companies can patent living organisms, and then when it cross pollinates with other crops, they can sue those farmers for stealing their patented material. Yeah. Uh, so they end up owning huge portions of the food supply. And that's ridiculous. You should you should not be able to to patent those type of and, things. And that those would are, be those the, are not inventions. And, and that would exactly. And that would be also a strong argument to make it um uh be able to be late. Like they would not if if it's something that's patented, then they don't have a right to call it a soybean anymore because a true soybean or or corn or whatever isn't patented. So now they have to call it like T-2A516 or whatever the, um, you, you know, the, the, the name they gave it is. Um, and so they should have to call it that because it either is a soybean and, it, and if it really is, then it's not patentable. But if it is patentable and they can sue people over it, then they should not be able to technically, it would be fraud to call it a soybean um, anymore. Um, just the fact that well, they Well, you know, it, I mean, it, it is what it, it is. What it is and I, mean, it might I, have I don't think what you call it is as, is as important as claiming ownership of it. Well, I and agree with your thing, point, too. I mean, but, I mean, they have put in, like, you know, fish genes inside of tomatoes. So you might be allergic to fish or something. And, and actually, when, when you mix, like, genes from a mammal, into a plant, um, you know, I, I, it might look like a tomato on the outside, but it really isn't a tomato if it has fish genes in it, you know? No, they, they are definitely crossing some lines there, and it's, uh, you know, and it's hard to say what you should call some of that stuff. Um, but the, the, even if you were to, were to say, okay, is this stuff safe, if you were to assume that it is, that it is safe for you, um, the, the other effect this is having is it prevents smaller businesses from getting into markets. Uh, the biochemical industry has, has done this, and it, it's happening widespread in technology as well. If, if you look at what's going on between companies like Apple and Samsung over patents, um, in order to maintain market share in, in, uh, in building, whether it's technological gadgets or, or producing food or chemicals, um, you need a patent portfolio and an army of lawyers. They've created a system that rewards whoever has the most muscle, and a lot of times that means the most money, in court to come out ahead. These companies are not winning based on the quality of their product and the benefit that it gives their customers. They're winning based on their ability to win in court. 
Yeah, a lot of them wouldn't even be in business, I mean, if, if they had to, to rely. I mean, obviously, I, I mean, any company that has the advantage of being bailed out or having their minions inside of um, these agencies, which are supposed to be there to prevent, you know, um, fraud and abuse and abuse of power, but instead they're being used to hamper down um, competition. And so, you, you know, 95% of the American populace should be um, with, um, you, you know, what you're saying on these issues. I mean, uh, you know, the, the majority of small businesses, Americans who want more choice, who want an equal playing field, who wants opportunities for themselves and their posterity and their neighbors, um, uh, should be championing, um, you, you know, equal justice, um, full disclosure, um, you know, no more conflicts of interest and having people in our government that work for us. We the people, we own the government, we're the government. We shouldn't be saying they, we should be saying we, but, um, but obviously it's they, you know, some special powers who feel like they're, um, you know, more special than us, that they, you know, that, that it's okay for them to infiltrate, buy thing, people off, try to put their minions, their minions inside. And I don't think that's a disappropriate world word because the way they're, re, you know, the revolving door goes, I mean, it, they might as well be, um, you, you know, dr you know, direct uh, employees for, you know, some of these companies. It's it's in every agency. And um, so whether you agree with these agencies or not, um, I mean, the fact is right now this is worse than even having them um, working properly. And, and actually, you know, you could argue properly working one would, would be better. And um, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's those agencies. And then, you know, we talked a little bit about civil liberties here and um, uh, farming and, and, and uh, the wars overseas. Uh, and um, the, the drug war, I mean, these are just all issues about uh, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, war and peace. I mean, these are the big issues um, of the day of 2012. Do you think, um, uh, well, d let me ask you two questions um, real quick, uh, Eric. It's a, we ask everyone this also is um, who, who are some of your favorites? Um, uh, past and or modern um, political figures and, and or I, I'd say favorite or interesting. It doesn't have to be someone you necessarily liked, but it could be someone that, um, you know, you might want to point out or it could be someone that, that you admire. And, and also, I mean, what do you think? Th it, there couldn't be a better opportunity than 2012 so far while Congress has this low approval rating. I think the people are waking up. Most people are getting their news from the Internet now. And so not everyone. I mean, of course, there's a lot of people who only get their news, you, you know, from um, MSNBC, Fox, et cetera. But uh, uh, and not to say you shouldn't get some news from there. But the, I mean, that's, you know, if you if you want to get the full spectrum, you have to go on the Internet. And um, and so, yeah, what, what about those two questions like the climate um, as far as um, an opportunity and then, you know, some of your favorite um, people? Sure. Yeah, well, and the news has gotten fairly ridiculous. I haven't actually had television in quite a long time. Um, you you find that, or I find that when I when I watch it occasionally, um, the amount of information that's left out compared to what I get on, on various online sources is amazing. Um, as far as, as far as people, um, you know, there unfortunately really aren't a lot of people in government that have had that I'm aware of that have been in government in, in my lifetime that I really like a lot. Um, you know, I'll, I'll choose a, a couple. There's, there's one congressman from each party that I, uh, that I do like. And that, uh, on the Republican side, of course, would be Ron Paul, which, uh, shares, uh, a lot of my platform. Um, and then Dennis Kucinich on, the on the Democrat side, uh, and for a lot of the same reasons, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I chose to run as a libertarian because that's, that's essentially my philosophy. It fits with, you know, uh, especially at the, the federal level, how I would like to see things run. I, I want to live in a, in a free country. Um, but my, my campaign is not about pushing a specific political ideology. It's about giving people an option other than the the uh, two parties acting as one that we have right now. Um, and I've, I've sat and had some, some fairly lengthy conversations with people who consider themselves to be Green Party uh, supporting or, or even socialist, and there's a surprising amount of crossover because a lot of the things that those people are upset about seeing 
Democrats and Republicans do are the same things I'm upset about seeing. Um, I, I think what's really going to happen is, is we're going we're to have to get to a point where they're just they're ignoring so many important issues that eventually the differences between between the, these various ideologies are are less important than than not continuing down this road. Um, and I, I think that, that third parties of, of of various sorts need to need to kind of support each other so that we can get some different voices in there. Well, that's why, you know, I started this website, libertarianprogressive.com, and that's why we're doing these interviews. That's why I think, you know, this year we have a um, – uh, just kind of a um, an idea to spread out there of uh, 50 people elected to the Congress this year that are not Republicans or Democrats. I've seen a lot of fusion candidates. Delaware has a candidate, for example, who's running for Senate, who's a Green Party candidate. He's also endorsed by the Libertarian Party. I've seen it um, vice versa. Uh, you know, there's another person running in Texas on Libertarian, but he's getting a lot of support from the Green Party. I mean, it's 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 a matter of priorities. I mean, the issues of war and peace, ju just all the different wars from the drug wars to, to, to you know, whether we're Republic versus um, Empire, whether, you know, this is a civilian controlled military or, um, a, you know, a corporate controlled military. I, I mean, those things matter right now and and these are the pressing issues we can get into the other details later and yeah Dennis Kucinich and Ron Paul those are two of my favorites a lot, a lot of people li like um, those two there um, and um, now to me this is I would somewhat consider this a wedge issue um, I know some people make all their decisions off this to me there's uh, big issues of war and peace I think right now we're probably going to end have the status quo for like a decades to come so I don't think it's really an issue but may I ask you sir what what you think of um, about the um, uh, you know the pro-life pro-choice debate sir well, I I don't really see government having any role in that sort of thing, and especially when it comes to uh, giving someone the power to decide when when life starts. I don't think is is something that any human should be able to decide, and I think there there's some real potential dangers in doing that, regardless of which side of the issue you're on. Um, you know, if you allow the government to make that decision, you have to remember that regardless that, that they will have that power in the future, regardless of, of which side of the issue people who control the government later on are on. Um, you know, what, what happens when overpopulation gets out of control? And, and uh, you know, I, I really don't think it's a good idea. And, uh, you know, even if, even if, if you have... And more uh, in the future, you know, I mean, education is really the way to go right so, i mean uh, on this issue i think um because um because you're going to have back alley abortions and stuff like that if if you, you know it, it's it's um if people really want to reduce it, i can understand the argument being against it i can also understand that there is a debate going on right now when life really begins and i think that's the key question you know let's just make our, our world a better place to live in yeah and then there'll be less. How about yeah. we, we reduce war? We reduce government corruption. We make we try to provide a, a sustainable future. Yeah. Perhaps that'll help. Yeah, I think it'll help a lot more than, than trying to legislate the problem away because yeah. when has that worked? That's a good point. I mean, it's it's uh, there's a lot of things that uh, people and, and and again, I can understand no tax dollars going to it. people are adamantly opposed but they should also keep in mind there's a lot of people adamantly opposed to the wars and um, things like that um, now here's a question for North Dakota because um, are you kind of in the middle of a an energy boom there or something like that I mean what what what's are some things you would say to now, I think this is a national campaign I mean if you're in Ohio or Texas um, referring back to Kucinich or um, Ron Paul or wherever you're at, Washington, uh, state of Washington. I don't think the state of Washington has any um, independent or third-party people on the ballot there. So, you know what? It might be a good investment to invest in Eric Olson here. I mean, I'm in Florida. Um, I see, you, you know, that's, I mean, you admired Kucinich and Ron Paul, and they weren't from North Dakota. Um, so, I mean, Eric will be making uh, life and death decisions um, and standing up for the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and we need people like that in. And, I, I mean, I sense, um, you, you know, uh, yeah, you're, 
basically, you know, kind of the common sense, reasonable thinking, a lot like the founding fathers, you can unite Green Party, Libertarian and um, Middle America. So, I mean, I think people have a good choice here. But anyways, well, what are some things you would say to your fellow North Dakotans uh, before we, we go? And then I'll just ask you also as a combo question is if you'd list, say anything that, that we might have forgotten. And, um, and, and, and so thanks, Eric. Well, um, we, we have one congressman in North Dakota, uh, and I think especially for a state that has that small of a footprint in, in the House of Representatives, uh, a libertarian federal government is, is very favorable. We are not going to have the same pull on, on issues that larger states with larger populations have. Decisions that are made, blanket policies at the federal level, are not going to reflect the interests of North Dakota. They're going to reflect the interests of New York, Texas, California, uh, places that have much larger political influence at the federal level. Uh, and there are, we do have we do have influence. We do have two senators and, and such, but um, I think that our state is much better off running a lot of its own business, uh, and frankly, I think the other states are too. Um, we, we don't all have to be the same. Um, 50 laboratories and, of freedom is um, yeah, yes. one way to say it. Um, a mistake made at the federal level is harder to undo, and it, it affects everyone. Um, but at the I, same I time, support. yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. At the same time, that doesn't mean like the federal government doesn't have a role. The federal government's supposed to be the ones protecting our civil liberties, not um, trampling not, on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there are certain things the federal government's supposed to do, and those, those are fairly clear and written out. Um, and that's, that's not what's happening right now. That's not the way our country is being run. Um, and I. I I was going to say, I, I welcome support from, from people in other states. I, I think it, it does benefit everyone in the country if we have one person in Congress who is outside of this two-party system, who is one person there bringing up an issue that no one else is willing to, does make a difference. And we don't have enough of that. In fact, uh, we're losing two of them this year. Kucinich and both Ron Paul are not running for re-election. Unfortunately, we are losing them. Um, and I want to make one other one other point quick here about um, funding, and I'm, I'm against the, the concept of corporate personhood that uh, we have these international corporations, and a lot of this is, is not even American money or necessarily uh, Americans who are controlling it um, that is influencing our elections. Big multinational corporations are, are dumping enormous amounts of money into our political system, and, and that is equating to, uh, that's what's, that's what's getting people into office. Um, it's taking away the power of, of Americans voting and putting it in the hands of, of essentially those who are the wealthiest. Um, and there is an interesting new, uh, new technology out here, one which I am in embracing me, and I, I believe there's a, a state senate candidate, I can't remember what state he's from now, that is also accepting this for campaign donations. But if you notice, you go to donations on my site, you will see a, a button that accepts Bitcoin donations. Oh. And this is a new uh, online currency, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, much the way BitTorrent works. There's no, no central authority or government, um, no federal reserve that can come along and print more money. Um, it is essentially a system that anybody with a computer can connect to, can do business on, can contribute resources to the network and earn income from contributing those resources. Anybody can tra It allows anyone to transfer money almost instantly and at almost no cost anywhere else in the world. And it is far beyond uh, the reach of, of government regulators or of the controls of the, the banking and credit card processing systems that most business has to work within at this point. Um, it's, it's a very interesting technology. I encourage people to go out and check yeah, out. And well, it's something that you can do anonymously without even having to vote. It's just by using it. 
Well, let's give your website out here just in case um, people need it here. You probably just type in Eric Olson um, in Google, but it's um, Eric, E-R-I-C, Olson, O-L-S-O-N, 2012 or 2012.com. And then, yeah, if you click on the donate button, which I, I would encourage you to help as many independent third-party candidates. I mean, give the maximum if you can, but give anything that you got because, I mean, you're giving it to the country. It's an investment. You're going to have a better world, more freedom. Live, I mean, live in a free country, exactly. Um, and then you'll be able to see the Bitcoin um, option there. And, uh, yeah, I've heard of Bitcoin. It, it does, it's very, very interesting, uh, and that's for sure. And so... Um, well, well, Eric, um, we do appreciate your time, and um, and so you know, hopefully, people will call your. I guess they'll need to call your local media channels. I mean, who are the media channels who are hosting the debates well, that people should call? Locally, we have uh, Prairie Public Television is uh, has not let me into the debate. Um, there are uh, a number of other ones, and I I don't remember which ones which ones are left. I know one one has passed, and and despite. Um, giving the excuse that they didn't have time for me after the Democrat backed out. They still didn't let me in. I believe that was the Petroleum Council. But uh, Prairie Public uh, Television, you could definitely give a call to um, the local paper here, the, the Fargo Forum. Um, encourage them to include me in a poll. That would that would be very nice. Um, any of the newspapers, any pretty much any media source in North Dakota, um, you could also check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Eric Olson for Congress. Um, I should mention, if you Google Eric Olson, there is another Eric Olson running for Congress in another state um, who is completely different. Um, I believe I come up as four of the top five, but I'm the one running in North Dakota. <laughs> Well, great. We'll have your link um, there at uh, uh, well uh, on here and uh, and so everyone. Yeah, it's just Eric Olson O L S O N two thousand twelve dot com and um, Eric is E R I C um, and uh, you know call the local media. I mean those two, especially a public radio. I, I mean a public channel. You would think they would have you, you know all the people on there personally. I mean that could be an issue in itself. I mean I, I if I was running I, I you know a principal decision might be to um you know not be in the debates unless if you know your opponents are allowed in the debates i mean if, if you want to have a true debate i mean i guess they they would want to have a sterilized debate um and uh it just um yeah honestly it's it, you know we if, are we sick and tired of being sick and tired it, it just makes me sick that they they're doing all the opposite things that are good for the country it's um, we all know that so let's just um pull this emergency break in the Constitution that we have called the House of Representatives where we can elect someone new every two years and uh, that's why it's there um, so everyone use it um, uh, use it or lose it right saying uh, well Eric I'll say goodbye to you after this interview thank you so much for your time uh, this has been a, a very interesting interview and I think something everyone should hear and uh, know more of their options and it's not something you would hear from the Republicans or Democrats and that is for sure and uh, thanks again Eric you're welcome.